on, on peut commencer. Yellow Knife North and Chair of this committee. Today's standing committee is having a review on public on Bill 63, an act to amend the Official Languages Act. Uh, before we begin, uh, so we will begin by having the minister present the bill and have committee answer some qu ask questions of the minister. Uh, I'm going to ask that committee. I know we also have a simultaneous review about the Official Languages Act and a whole realm of questions we could ask, but try to keep your questions to the scope of this current bill before us. Uh, that is because we have a number of public presentations with us and we have a bit of a hard stop today at 2.30 as there is, uh, our interpreters are only available till then and we have another committee meeting scheduled. So I'm hoping we can be about 45 minutes with the minister max and then that would allow whoever else is presenting to start about two o'clock uh right now i see a number of people in the room i believe college nordique and francophone tenua is presenting is there anyone else here who is intending to present today thank you can i get your name for the record mary rose black duck okay okay thank you mary rose uh so for those Okay, uh, I will begin by introducing the bill. The bill amends the Official Languages Act to update the preamble to recognize the leg legacy of colonialism on the indigenous languages of the Northwest Territories and reaffirm the commitment of the government to implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the People. The bill clarifies and strengthens the role of the Languages Commissioner, merges the Official Languages Board and the Aboriginal Languages Revitalization Board into the Official Languages Board to improve efficiency and provide an updated role. Revise the time period for statutory reviews of the Act from every five years to within the first two years of every second Legislative Assembly, beginning in the 21st Legislative Assembly, and update the Act so as to be more inclusive, including through the use of Indigenous over Aboriginal and the use of gender-neutral language. Uh, this meeting is a hybrid meeting with some attending over Zoom and others in purpose. In person, it is being streamed on the Legislative Assembly's social media channels in Clicho and French and English. Uh, at this time, I will ask committee members to introduce themselves, beginning on my left. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Um, je m'appelle Kevin O'Reilly. Je suis le député pour uh, la circonscription de Black Frame. Uh, my name is Kevin O'Reilly, and I'm the uh, Emily for Frame Lake. Merci, Masi. Thank you. Hello, Richard. It's Jerry Grant, and I'll leave her with the Rocky Simpson, MLA for Hay River South. Good afternoon, Caitlin Cleveland, MLA for Cam Lake. Thank you. Uh, uh, are there any members joining us virtually today? No, I don't believe so. This is uh, the committee. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Minister, to uh, provide your opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for inviting me today to speak to you and the members of the committee about Bill 63, an act to amend the Official Languages Act. Today, I, I have witnesses with me John McDonald, the Deputy Minister of Education, Culture and Employment, Shannon Barnett Aikman, Assistant Deputy Minister of Education and Culture, Benoit Boutin, Executive Director, Francophone Affairs Secretariat, Shauna Coleman, Director, Indigenous Languages and Education Secretariat, and Laura Jeffrey with Legislation Division in the Department of Justice. The Official Languages Act of the Northwest Territories seeks to recognize, preserve, and enhance the use of Indigenous languages in the NWT, along with the two official languages of Canada. To do so, the Act designates Chippewan, Cree, English, French, Gwich'in, Nuinaktun, and Nuktatut, Nuvialuktun, North Slavey, South Slavey, and Tlicho as official languages in the Northwest Territories. The Act requires a review to be conducted every five years. Although Standing Committee has not yet completed its current statutory review, in the interest of supporting some legislative change in the 19th Assembly, the Department wel welcomed a set of initial recommendations from committee for amendments to the Act. Based on committee's recommendations and the Department's engagement with stakeholders and the public, 
ECE is seeking to amend the act to clarify and strengthen the role of the languages commissioner, to merge and empower the language boards as a single unified board, and to emphasize the importance of language protection as a means of implementing the articles of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I want to thank committee for its thoughtful review and collaboration in helping advance this important legislative initiative. I'm pleased to bring forward these amendments to support the protection of all official languages in the NWT. This concludes my opening remarks, and I would be happy to answer any questions committee may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, questions, comments from committee? Uh, I'm like, uh, I'll begin. Uh, Minister, I, committee has previously and previous committees uh, recommended that we stop using the term North and South Slavey. We heard this in our public review. Uh, I'm just wondering if the minister can give an update on why those are not in the bill. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, settling on a name for uh, a, a language is not a, a simple task. We need to work with the language speakers and there's not, uh, at this point, there's not agreement on what the name, the official name of, of a language should be. Um, I, I can leave it at that unless there's more questions. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, can I just clarify whether work is being undertaken with the speakers of those languages to try and agree on a name? Thank you. So work was done in anticipation of this bill, but I don't believe that um, there's ongoing work right now. I can ask the Deputy Minister to speak to this, but I believe we're waiting until uh, the next review to, to take on that work. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Deputy Minister, anything to add? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, the minister is correct. Um, as part of uh, advancing this uh, legislative initiative, uh, we consulted with the language communities um, and did ask the question uh, about uh, preferences for terminology. Uh, there was not uh, at that time uh, uh, unanimity. Um, so uh, at that point, we uh, dropped that proposal and we look forward to the committee's uh, report. And at that point, we would re-engage with the language communities to see if we can advance that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions, comments from committee? Emily Cleveland. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I think I'm looking to hear from the minister on, um, on, I guess, kind of the scope of the bill. And so one of the things that we hear time and time again when we um, have the opportunity to speak to communities about official languages is whether the bill goes far enough as far as um, the future of languages. And so while this bill has changes um, around the, the scope of work of the languages commissioner, it doesn't speak to uh, proactive protection uh, specific to Indigenous languages especially um, or active revitalization of Indigenous languages in the territory. And so I'm wondering if the minister can speak to why the um, modernization of the act or the changes to the act were silent on, on that need, given especially that in the risk of losing languages and language speakers in the territory and, and where language really is at in the territory right now. Thank you. Thank you, minister. <clears throat> Thank you. So this is a limited bill uh, because the committee has not completed this review there you know we are not advancing uh, major changes that might come out of that review these are the t the minor changes that we know we could uh, get done this assembly uh, with the time that we had but the the bigger decisions or bigger items such as names such as um you know setting a future direction if we want to change direction in the territory that that's part of a larger process um, yeah I, I can leave it at that and uh, answer any further questions thanks Thank you. Any follow-up, Emily Cleveland? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And and I understand that um, there is you know limited time, and that we don't have control over what priorities um, the twentieth assembly will set as far as official languages. Um, but there are examples of some proactive legislation that that has been enacted. So when when Nunavut, for example, split from the NWT, they took with them. Uh, the NWT Official Languages Act and made it their own, but then they also added in the Inuit for uh, Inuit Language Protections Act, I believe they call it. Uh, and so there is some examples out there already of um, ways 
that language can be uh, mandated to be around communities. And so one of the things that we heard was, you know, we have our youth who are doing language courses and then they go out into communities and, and language isn't visible anywhere or language isn't used anywhere. And so how do we protect language and encourage additional language speakers when really um, it is very targeted, the, the use of languages sometimes within school systems or learning systems, but not within our communities. And so is ECE considering doing work on uh, legislation uh, or secondary legislation like that that really um, has an active role in language protection and language revitalization? Thank you. Thank you, Emily Cleveland. Minister? Thank you. So as the member mentioned, um, there are other pieces of legislation in other jurisdictions that are not the Official Languages Act. So in Nunavut, um, the, lang the act she references is a completely different act. And so we didn't touch on any of those uh, instances um, here. A lot of the revitalization efforts, they, those are really program oriented, not necessarily things that, that, that would appear in an act. Um, and so I really look forward to um, the next assembly or perhaps the 21st assembly uh, when standing committee uh, completes its review, perhaps it'll be done this term. I'm not quite sure what the plans are, but following a uh, a major review, which hasn't happened in many years, I think we can start having those discussions. Uh, but at this point, there are no plans to uh, to advance any additional legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, just for the public's sake, it is our intention to table our final review of the Official Languages Act in the next sitting, and then it is our hope that ECE will take those recommendations, respond to them and hopefully start the work to implement some of them. But uh, you will see those next sitting, Minister. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Emily O'Reilly. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I do want to um, echo the sentiments of the Chair in terms of changing the names of some of the languages. Uh, you know, uh, and I think it should have been done in this bill, uh, Dene Sutlene, Dene Jati, Dene Satutine. Those should have been incorporated into this bill, and I don't know why they weren't, but um, I do have one question for the, the minister, and uh, it arises from at least one of the submissions that, that I've seen uh, that we're going to hear a little bit more about later, but um, the two languages boards as they exist now are going to be merged into one, uh, and it'll be called the Official Languages Board. I guess there's been some calls for some greater transparency around um, what they do, but also just promoting the work that they do. So um, can the minister commit that there's going to be some sort of uh, direction or uh, push to have the uh, Official Languages Board um, um, take a greater role in communications and uh, keep uh, meeting summaries, make those available to the public? Um, but also uh, an annual report that uh, could be uh, even tabled in the House by the Minister. So uh, can the Minister commit to have those things done uh, as part of the you know, efforts to revitalize official languages? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Minister? Thank you. So to the member's first comment about um, the name changes, uh, we have to go to the language communities and they tell us what those the names are, and there is not agreement on all of those names that the member mentioned. So uh, I can't put in a bill, I can't tell the language community that this is what their language is called. That really needs to come from the ground up. And there is um, discussions about what's a dialect, what's a language. So there's a lot going on, and there was not the, the, the time to, to do that work. And uh, it's not the kind of work that I would like to do um, quickly. I'd like it to be done uh, properly. So. Um, that is, you know, th that's that issue. In terms of the reporting, there is an annual report. Uh, we can work on um, improving or, you know, enhancing that annual report. Um, that's not an issue. Uh, this is an advisory board to advise the minister. Uh, so it, it's perhaps different than some of the other boards that might be making uh, decisions on certain items and, and have more stringent reporting, but I'm uh, happy to have the discussion with the department to see what we can do to enhance the reporting and the public aspect of this board. Thank you. Thank you. Any follow-up, Emily O'Reilly? Uh, no, thanks. I appreciate 
the minister's comments, but um, I'll be looking for a bit firmer commitment on some of those items uh, than just uh, taking it up with the department. So thanks. Thank you. Uh, any further questions, comments? MLA Simpson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the open remarks uh, from the minister. And I guess in his open remarks, uh, he mentioned that the Official Languages Act of the Northwest Territory seeks to recognize, preserve, and enhance the use of Indigenous languages in the NWT along with the two official languages of Canada. And then we have a federal piece of legislation, uh, you know, the Indigenous in uh, Languages Act, which is intended to support reclamation, re uh, revitalization, maintain, and strengthening of Indigenous languages in Canada. And that received uh, royal assent uh, on June 21st, 2019. Uh, in, in the uh, Indigenous Languages Act of the Northwest Territory, in the Northwest Territories Official Languages Act, what I see missing is the Michif language. And we, we've talked about this uh, previously. Uh, you know, we have a number of Métis people in Northwest Territories. We have Métis governments. We have Métis culture. Yet this language is uh, still not uh, not included. And I don't, uh, I'm hoping it's on the radar and, and I, I expect that it is. So, you know, uh, we are losing, uh, you know, many of the speakers are our elders and uh, they won't be with us for long. And we, it's important that, you know, if we're going to revitalize and we're going to maintain it, we have to do something. And how do we do that? Uh, you know, that's the question. And I'm hoping the minister can, can answer that. You know, one of, the, one of the things that I see is that it has to be embedded in legislation as with the other Indigenous languages as well, uh, if, if we're going to try and uh, make sure that uh, it's not lost. So. Uh, one little question in there and uh, just mostly comments. Thank you. Thank you, Emily Simpson. Minister? Thank you. Um, and as, as I've uh, been stating, we are making minor changes to this legislation. Uh, the addition of an, another language is a major decision. We would have to work with all of the language groups because this does have impacts as well. The GNWT provides funding for languages and uh, when you add another language, that impacts the funding available. So uh, there are direct impacts, uh, and we would need to work with people, work with other Indigenous governments. Um, as well, we need to determine how many midshift speakers there are. Uh, there's estimates as low as, you know, a dozen, maybe 10 people, and I've heard higher estimates as well, but it's, it's still unclear. So I look forward to committee's report to see what, uh, what they have to say about um, this as well, because I'm, uh, I'd be interested to, uh, to hear what sort of work they've done and what uh, they've been hearing from the language community. Thank you. Thank you. Any follow-up, Emily Simpson? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, you know, it, it's concerning when I hear that, you know, uh, you know it, the numbers are as low as 10 and, and could be higher because, you know, if it is that low, uh, you know, it, it, there's a chance that it's going to be lost. So it, it's, it, it's more important than ever now is to ensure that we do something to, uh, to preserve it and uh you know for future generations so i'm hoping that that's going to be on the department's radar and on this committee's radar as well and uh hope, hopefully uh we can make some headway there thank you thank you emily simpson any uh response minister uh, no i look forward to the report thank you thank you any further questions comments from the committee emily jericho thank you mr chairman uh, <clears throat> i just want to just make a couple comments and um I guess along the lines of uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Simpson, um, the uh, writing I represent uh, is the Tunaday, one of the day writing. And um, here, as you know, the claims are getting close to being completed, uh, you know, in the Keicho, and last I heard, they're at the EIP stage, and et cetera. But, um, you know, there's still a lot of discussion happening already in the community that I've been, you know, when I go into the communities and listen to the people and, um, you know, they, they want to talk about the Willede dialect and language, um, but it's not mentioned in here, but I think, I'm not really sure if you guys had, uh, Mr. Minister, if you guys had a chance to have any discussions with the Yellowknife Denny First Nation on this. On this um, on this act, and uh, did the did, did the uh, will the day language come up in, in your discussions? But uh, for me, I, I want to say that uh, it's an issue that we you know we need to take a look at for sure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Thank you Emily Dracon, Minister. 
Thank you, and I am aware of this issue. It's been a, a long-standing issue. Uh, across the territory, there are different opinions about what's a dialect and what's a language. And so it is a, uh, again, it's not an easy task. It's something that would likely take um, years to, to, to settle on. Uh, in terms of the actual discussions that happened um, or that have been happening like, over the years with the Yelnaj Dene uh, or any um, one for that matter in term, uh, regarding this language or Willaday, I can ask the Deputy Minister to, to provide some input and uh, he's free to um, in turn ask any of his staff to provide input if they have anything to add. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Deputy Minister. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with respect to this current uh, proposal, when we did uh, engage um, in May of uh, the last calendar year, uh, Akejo, uh, Dene First Nation was uh, involved and did provide uh, input into uh, and a response to uh, what we had provided, which was a plain language summary of the proposals at the time. Uh, aside from that, there have not been, um, at least recently, uh, ongoing in-depth uh, focused conversations uh, specifically around um, perhaps reclassifying or changing the classification of uh, Welladay. Um, and certainly not about uh, adding it as a distinct language within uh, this this uh, bill. Um, but besides that, there are regular conversations um, between uh, Indigenous Languages and Education Secretariat staff, as well as uh, staff within language communities who uh, we are partners with and who um, receive funding from ECE, uh, often a combination of territorial and federal funding to support language programming and revitalization um, within those language communities. So there are uh, regular contacts. I, I just wanted to stress that. But uh, again, uh, to answer the question directly, uh, only in uh, the engagement period have we had a, a focused conversation relative to this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Any follow-up, Emily Jericho? No, Mr. Chairman, uh, if it's already in the works and the discussions are already happening, I, I'll continue to meet my constituents and, and get further direction on what they want me to do on this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Minister, would you be able to provide any feedback you got on this issue? I, I think committee has made the previous recommendation to stop using the terms North Slavey and South Slavey, but we do not necessarily have the submissions of what the disagreement is on calling roads are. Would you be able to provide that, Minister? Sure. So the disagreement is one person says the language should be called this, another person says the language should be called something else. Uh, we can provide whatever information we have to committee to uh, to flesh out that um, that division. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions, comments from the committee? Emily Cleveland. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I want to acknowledge that um, the uh, proposed changes in the bill to the Languages Act does do uh, merge the language boards. Um, and looking at the current list for uh, the language board that's available online, sorry, the official languages board uh, that's available online, it currently shows three active uh, members out of a potential 22. That does include alternates. Uh, and so I'm wondering if um, the department sees a potential for more active participation uh, in the boards with a merger, or if they feel that maybe there are other changes to the act that need to happen in order to increase participation in official languages in the official languages board. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. So the website that the member is referring to is not updated. Uh, most of the positions are filled there. I think there's maybe two or three vacancies. I don't have the exact number, um, but that was done late last year. Um, and in terms of merging the two boards, this is based on recommendations from standing committee as well as from the boards themselves uh, over the last 15 years. Uh, essentially, the boards operate as one now, is my understanding. Um, they share membership and they meet uh, as one group. They don't have two separate meetings. Um, so it, my understanding is that it's uh, administratively, it would improve the functioning of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any follow-up, Emily Cleveland? 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Is it possible for uh, the minister to send the current list of the membership to committee and potentially update also the public registry of those board members as well? Uh, and then in addition to that, um, I, I see that the the role of the boards will be to provide recommendations, or one of the roles will be to provide recommendations to the minister and also have um, a hand in reviewing existing programs and services. But there's no stipulation within the bill that any kind of um, transparency occur with that reporting where it is publicly available um, and where it can then be used also within standing committees to uh, form ongoing recommendations and what can be used by regular members as well to kind of um, push for changes within the GNWT as far as support of official languages. And so I'm wondering if there is a commitment uh, that can be made that where this information, these recommendations can also can actually become a uh, public record. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. So this is a, a ministerial advisory board. It advises the minister. Um, some um, some of those communications could be uh, confidential. So I can, we can include uh, additional information. We can look at including that information in the annual report. So there is a mechanism to do this. And I'm hearing loud and clear from committee that the committee would like more information about what the board does and what the board is saying. And uh, I will commit to ensuring that there is more information included in the annual report going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further questions, comments from the committee? Hearing none, uh, Minister, on behalf of committee, uh, although you know it's not the biggest changes the Official Languages Act, it is the first changes we've seen since 2003, and uh, we, we thank you for your cooperation to date, working with committee, and we look forward to further discussions uh, on the Official Languages Act. Thank you very much. I appreciate committee's uh, ongoing interest in this. With that, uh, we will move to our public presentations, and I believe College Nordique is scheduled to present first, followed by Francophonie Tanoa, and then Mary Rose Black Duck. Um, yeah, you sit there. Uh, so unfortunately for those in the room, if you're going to present in French and anyone needs one of these earphones, I'm going to ask that you actually just come to the table and grab one if you would like, because uh, that is the only way to actually hear. Interpretation is needed. Uh, can I confirm you will be presenting in French? OK. So perhaps we can have, maybe I can ask MLAs to move to one side. Yeah, for sure. And then we can have kind of a public hearing side. Just sit. Yeah. It's, sorry, we have not quite figured out remote. We're hardwired in. It's a big circle. Everyone join us. Unless you just understand French and then you're fine. And if you're on the Zoom call, you should just be able to select language. Or And for these purposes, I believe it already preset to French, but channel two is Clicho as well. <laughs> Both ears. All right, I will continue. Thank you for coming to present to us today. Uh, if you could introduce everyone who's at the table and then begin your presentation. Hello, my name is Angelique Rina. I am the chair of board of directors of the Collège Nordique Francophone. I'm here with Audrey Fournier. She's the direct general director of the uh, Francophone in the Northwest Territory, Mr. Patrick Arsenault. He's a general director and Rosie Benny, manager of uh, Language School. Mrs. Speaker, I would like to uh, say thank you for um, inviting us here today. Mr. Speaker, member, chair of the committee, 
I would like to thank you for inviting the Collège Nordique Francophone to share with you its views on Bill 63, an amendment to the Official Language Act. So since the presentation is on official languages, we will speak to you in French. Nous allons être très heureux de, de, de prendre vos présentations uh, en anglais à la fin de la présentation. College Francophone was established more than 10 years ago and today offers um, professional training classes in French, English, Spanish, and Kijo. And we are currently uh, working with the Willy Dick community so we can teach their language. If we have post-secondary education in French in our souls, we have language teaching and a spread of 11 official languages in our hearts. I would like to acknowledge the presence of Rosie Benning, as, uh, as I, I did earlier, who skillfully steers the community relations necessary to build the trust needed to bring our linguistics community together. And we are proud that uh, the people of the Northwest area, they come to the College Nordique in large numbers for the joy of learning and understanding each other. And we firmly believe in doing so. We are participating in revitalization of indigenous languages in a way that maximizes the resources and expertise we have in teaching and in the greatest respect for the protocols that ensure sustainable and respectable relationships between language communities. As you can see, languages are the heart of our soul, our lives, and the definition of who we are. They enrich the Northwest Territory, just, that, just as they enrich our work. And for us, they're not in competition with each other. They exist in involving context. They exist in, an, in evolution and modernization. And the evolution and modernization of this act must create an environment where each language is respected and protected so that they can flourish. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like now we'll leave the floor to uh, our next speaker. The Collège Nordique Francophone is in the midst of a transformation to become accredited college uh, under the new post secondary education act developed by, by our government. For us, as a Francophone, educational institution, French is very important. And you can imagine, especially when we are in a minority situation, multilingualism is also important at our language school, but it's also important because of our environment. And in the Proposed Languages Act, we would like to focus on two elements. The Commissioner of Official Languages and the merger of the Official Languages Board and the Aboriginal Language Revitalization Board. Oh, uh, regarding the commissioner, commissioner of official languages, we're pleased that the government has heard what many official languages commissioners across the country has previously, previously recommended, which is to give more power to the office of commissioner of official languages. And the role is important and effective, and it's important to act. And although they're not part of a public service, um, this strengthens his or her independence, which is crucial to fully carry the mandate. Uh, we... We particularly welcome the changes to allow him to impose a time limit on institutions to respond to his request and allow him on his own initiative to go to court an institution that does not comply with the act. And this strengthened its powers and the act itself in a very real way. More detailed annual reports will allow the people of North Coast Territories to know which departments and agencies have received complaints in the process uh, of the commissioner's recommendation. And we believe that this will make the, progress mo uh, the process more transparent. And these reports are important tools for the Francophone community, also for public, public servants and the members of parliament. Merger of the Official Languages Board and Aboriginal Language Revitalization In Bill 63, you propose to merge the Official Languages Board and the, and the Aboriginal Languages Revitalization Board to become the Official Languages Board. We believe that this merger is beneficial for several reasons. First of all, since the mandates of composition of the two bodies overlap, we believe that the merger will lead to better management and monitoring of the official of the 11 official languages of the territories. And this will ensure that the recommendations of this new body are more coordinated, but we believe that the government could go even further in developing guidelines and requiring greater transparency in the work of the council, including the release of some documents from their meetings so that the public is more aware of the council's work. Regarding the protection of French language, and as, as a Francophone living in a minority context, we know it is very important to protect language, to have mechanisms in place to promote institutions and to ensure the vitality of the Francophone community. 
And the 2021 census data released last summer showed that the French is declining in most provinces and territories. Um, Francophone community in Northwest Territories have lost demographic weight between 2016 and 2021. In addition, according to the recent government of Northwest Territories uh, French Language Communication and Service Satisfaction Survey, the proportion of direct services provided in French in 2021, 2022 has decreased from 84.7% to 65.2%. And this is a decrease of all almost 20% of the provision of direct services in French. And it seems very important, quite actually urgent to increase the accessibility of services and improve active offer. Uh, active offer and access services in French is an integral part of the Official Language Act, even though this is not part of the current amendments. We feel it is important to emphasize it uh, to you. And we take this opportunity to remind you that the Collège Nordique is a supplier of Northwest Territories in teaching, learning, and language assessment. And together, we can build a skilled workforce that can meet the needs of Francophone Tenois in the Northwest Territories and the strength of the Northwest Territories, the diversity of our communities, and our strong desire to define ourselves on our own terms and to do things in a way that reflect our own realities. And although some may believe that the protection and promotion of French language to us is a detriment of other minority languages of the territory, we invite you to come to the college and see us and witness that the opposite is true. Straining the official language as is the right thing to do. And we thank you for giving the issue an important place in your legislative agenda. So this is the essence of what we wanted to present today. Once again, we thank you for the invitation and we're available to answer questions in French or in English um, if you have any. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Audrey Fournier. Thank you. Thank you to, thanks to the committee. Thank you for, um, uh, let us um, the opportunity to speak here today. I will try to be brief because we want to um, table. Uh, we will continue uh, tabling uh, documents uh, until January 25th, but we're um, so far um, satisfied with um, the amendments, especially when it comes to the power of the language um, the language board. However, as we've mentioned before, in one of our um, documents uh, tabled earlier, we hope to see um, other uh, changes to reinforce uh, the, and strengthen the communities. We would like to have more obligations so the state uh, may be able to um, release its data so for instance, we would like to uh, have uh, annual statistics to see uh, language evolution. We would like to see some measures so we can have uh, more funds. So far, um, the ministry does not have always um, the, the power to uh, act accordingly. There should be some obligations from the government to put some positive measures to encourage the vitality of language communities. And I would like to conclude by saying that uh, we have some questions uh, regarding some um, of the changes proposed and how this will affect uh, the Francophone community. And we would like to uh, provide, uh, provide you with answers coming from experts, but the situation may be a bit difficult but we, uh, we have to make some choices in order to uh, make, for the t make over the time. So we will provide you uh, by January 25th with a written statement. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to your written statement and thank you for your presentation today. Uh, I'll just open the floor up to committee. Uh, I'll just remind everyone to speak slowly uh, our interpreter was doing a very great job there, but I'll also note that our, our Klicho interpreter has to then interpret the French, so, or the interpreter, so it, 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 there is a bit of a delay. Uh, we work through it daily in the assembly. So with that, 
I will turn it over to committee for any questions uh, for uh, these four presenters. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much for the cost um, of coming to speak to, with us today. I um, want to go straight to active offer, which was uh, identified in the presentation today as being kind of one of the key components that the college wanted to uh, focus on today. And I guess I, I'd like to learn a little bit more about um, how the, uh, the presenters see this working better in on the front lines. And so, for example, within, um, uh, you know, healthcare, within education, within, you know, the DMV, is it is it about having more language speakers in front line uh, positions? Is it about having a timeline of, you know, when a, a uh, official language speaker, because a lot of our services are available in English, not in official, in any other official language. And so, because most people speak English and not necessarily official languages. And so, is it about a, a time frame, or is it about having ultimately more language speakers in frontline positions? Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll just open the floor to, I, I know there's the two different organizations here and four speakers, but whoever deux, wants to take it, just uh, raise your hand and our sound tech will put on the uh, mic. Parole, alors, uh, vous prie de lever anyone has any response? <laughs> It's a good question. I don't. I think there's more than one answer. There are many ways to do things. Yes, ultimately, having um, frontline services with bilingual um, uh, speakers is what the community wants. We're also aware that there are uh, many issues. We also think that there are several ways to answer the needs of the community until we get to our objective. So yes, there should be more um, recruitment, bilingual, I mean this, uh, more hiring of uh, bilingual uh, personnel, Many people may be able to speak French inside the government, but they are, if I, for instance, uh, if we talk about in a hospital, a patient would like to uh, be um, spoken in French to, then maybe the service provider may not be able to speak French. So. Uh, and it's not always easy to match one person with another when there's no planning. So yeah, recruiting is important, but there's also there should also be more strategic planning upstream. Thank you. Uh, any follow up on Lake Cleveland? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, and and when I look at, I think we're in such a unique situation in the territory where we have such a, a diversity of language across the territory and so for example in in hay river and in in yellowknife you would have more french language speakers however in you know sigachik or in um, wati you might not have as many french language speakers and somebody might be looking for uh service for example in in wati in klicho language or uh in sigachik in, in guichin or so I guess my, my question is, would it be reasonable to have then um, a, a regional active offer uh, in the legislation that reflects um, uh, languages that are in high demand in certain regions and an expectation that people can access frontline service in a regional language? Or, or does the college see another way to accommodate the uh, kind of rich language that, that exists across the territory? Thank you. Thank you. I'll open the floor to anyone who has the exist partout dans le territoire. Of course, ideally, 
Of course, so we ideally we would like to offer services in all languages, and we're trying our best here. Yes, of course, we are encouraging um, workers to speak French more. But if you speak another language, and if you're, and if you would like to speak your own language, maybe you can help um, the speakers who need it. Yes, oh, yes. Of course, I think that the need for French in small communities is is not as great, and um, it would be more logical to uh, speak uh, the regional language uh, rather than French. Thank you. Any further questions, comments from committee or presenter? Seeing none, we, we thank you for your presentations. And uh, as I stated, this bill will be before the legislature in the next sitting, as well as committee's report on the Official Languages Act and revitalization largely. So uh, there is always more time for discussion on this, and we welcome any submissions at any time and your written submission. Merci, merci. Uh, I will now uh, ask Mary Rose Blackduck to present. Uh, you guys can stay at the table if you need interpretation or not, uh, but perhaps maybe it's just best that you present from there and I'll turn it over to you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I want to do this in my language. My name is Mary Rose Black Duck. I grew up in Bechakon. When I first started speaking in my language, I was just a little girl. Today, we always refer to papers, and I, I came without any documentation as to what I'm going to say, because it's all in my mind and my head. The government know how many languages there are. They talk about revitalization of the languages. And, and we are told our languages are decreasing. And they tell us that even our our family members are losing their language. We have 11 official languages in the NWT, and they want to help us to revitalize our language. And also, there are two boards for the language board, and they are going to merge into one, and that is what is being said. And if they did that, is that going to help increase our language use in the community? And also, we want our languages to be strong. And you also mentioned revitalization board, and we have members. We have members from all the communities. I think, I believe there's 23 communities. Are they helping people to increase their language? Is the board working to revitalize our language? The two boards, if, even if they merge into one, how are, is that going to help us in the communities to increase our language use? We would like to know how that is going to happen. We would like to know what their jobs are as board members. They must have a lot of documentation and that they have the, what they have done in the past, whether this can be available to the public. When we walk around in the communities, we see a lot of people that is in a, a poor state, 
even the elders, they can't communicate with their grandchildren because they don't understand each other. So how are we to increase and revitalize our language? They should have all that available to the pub public so we can see it, so we can help them to revitalize the language as well. The government of the Northwest Territories, how, uh, what are they doing to help the people? Uh, I, I'm thinking of all these issues. They say our languages are dying. For me, I don't believe them. I, I believe, I, I'm believing that they're lying to us. Our language is sleeping for a little while, but one day it will awaken. And these two boards that are there, we should, the people that are around this table who is interested in languages should sit on these boards to help to revitalize the language. I want more information on that. Thank you very much, Mary Rose, for your submission. Uh, you can ask me questions. <laughs> perfect, thank you. Uh, we also, through our report table and the legislation, will get you answers to your questions about uh, both the number of Klitschow speakers, how the language is doing. Uh, it's not a number of Klitschow speakers. It's like with the language. I'm talking about the language. The languages in general, the official languages that's recognized. I thought you had interpreters. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> the official languages that is recognized in the Northwest Territories by the territorial government. Once these two boards are merged, what is their goal? To increase the use in homes, workplaces, and in the communities. That's what I want to know. Thank you. Yeah, and we in our report. <laughs> about Chinese language. <laughs> I mean, if I want to do that, I can do it at home. In our report, we will make sure, and we've got a commitment out of the minister to provide us more information on, you know, what the the new the board. Yes. Yeah. But what the goal? And I, I think at, at this point, step one is kind of getting the board back up, fully functioning, more transparent, more public, making sure it is fully staffed. And the board will have to go away and do some strategic planning. And, and we want to hear what recommendations they are getting from their communities and what they are submitting to the minister. But uh, today, I think, is step one in making you know it one board and, and getting it back to what I think the original intent was, which was to be a strong advocacy board. But I'll open up the floor to any questions for Mary Rose from committee. Hearing none, uh, any last comments, Mary Rose? <laughs> Sorry. One of the recommendations that I would like for all of you to consider, how about setting up language centers in some of the uh, larger communities? It could be videos, I mean, anything, anything that's documented in the languages can be used over there, utilized over there. It could be a community resource center. I know we are going through preserving because that's the stage we're at right now. We have to preserve what's already been recorded because <clears throat> The people that have been interviewed are already gone. We'll never get it back. So that's all we have left, is to preserve. Uh, like everything else in life, everything goes through evolutions. It goes through changes. <clears throat> language does the same thing. The language that was spoken by my grandfather 50, 60 years ago is no longer used. So that is now like the old Tinsong. And it has to be documented and preserved so that hopefully maybe somebody 
that's passionate enough, let's say 100 years from now, will come back and try to revive it. It does happen. It happened in other places, other countries with languages. Languages is very interesting. It has a very good history. So uh, language resource centers in the communities, in the larger communities, I think that would be just wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, and we I, we did committee did hear similar things about making sure there are places. You know, uh, we heard submissions for language nests. Uh, you know, where there's childcare provided for youth, and where we heard teachers say that you know they, they struggle to get a textbook. You know, translated into their language, let alone having full place where one person can go for all of the resources. And I, I believe it's committee's intention to language speak to that. Go ahead. Dan, language resource center. You know that, right? Okay. Because language nests, you go to <clears throat> preschools or daycare centers, like you said, and you teach um, Greek, uh, no, H3, 4, the language. That's the language nest. And then you also have the resources at home. And that's what you go to. That's the language nest. When I'm talking about <laughs> language resource centers, which is different. Anybody that's working in languages or that's working in, let's say, Tinson. Tinson is the umbrella name of the language that I am familiar with. But there's also another sub languages under Tinson. Like what he has, a few terms are a little bit different than how I would pronounce it. Gamiti is the same way. And so it's Whippity. But overall, the umbrella is Kinson. And we're stuck with that. Same thing with Willade. There's this um, a merge of several different dialects. Dialects, again, is different than language. So that's how they came up with Willade. Even in Besakun itself, Besakun is considered Kinson speaking. But then there's the Bay Island dialect, French Island dialect, and Orange Point dialect, and then there's Government Street dialect. There's, it goes families or by neighbors or by sections. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Mary from Green? Uh, I'm likely to go ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, and thank you so much for, for joining us here today. Um, one of the things that we heard a lot about when we were visiting communities was a need for immersion for kids to be able to learn um, their language right throughout school. And and so, and then we heard today, um, you know, more about active offer, and so that's from kind of, you know, government frontline services more. And so I'm, I'm wondering if if you could share with us kind of your view of government responsibility as far as language revitalization outside of kind of the immersion or the frontline services and the rest of kind of our communities and society of, of where that role sits. Thank it's you. It's not government responsibility, but the government should support these initiatives. Um, teaching languages in, in all levels, which I know seems impossible. But if you have dedicated people that would love to do the work, the, the written materials, the photos, illustrations, anything, it can be done. It's possible. Um, I don't know, I just love languages. It's also very exciting and challenging. It is. Because <laughs> chemicals, poison, vitamins, appetizers, they all have names. It's just a matter of searching for it. So it is exciting. 
I think it's very exciting. And it's also very <clears throat> classy. Um, if, if I said something like, you're skating, I can use that in slang. Do the zoo, the zoo, the zoo, the zoo. That man's a sliding, 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 <laughs> like forever. <laughs> it's just slang kinson. That's all it is. So, as far as, as far as teaching in languages, I, in all levels of uh, of grades in school, it is possible. It is possible. You just need to have uh, like-minded people to work together. Like in science, math, humanity. One of the interesting ones that I find is spirituality. It's, <clears throat> I just find it interesting. Mom, that's on. Thank you. Any further questions, comments for Mary Rhodes from committee? Hearing none, on behalf of committee, thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, I don't believe we have anyone else scheduled to present. Absent any last comments from anyone in the room. So with that, I will thank all of our presenters today and uh, conclude our public broadcast.